Hello and welcome back to yet another Flora and the Novice Explorers video. This week again we're going back in time to the glory days before lockdown. Yeah, we see some truly stunning places, beautiful beaches, and it's given us something to reflect on and make us realise just how lucky we have been and still continue to be. Hopefully over the next couple of weeks we will have caught up with our vlogs, so expect a few more over the coming days. Yes, so remember to stay home, stay safe, stay sane and keep well. We hope you enjoy the video. But before that, I've got to get into character because we've got to do something we haven't done for a while. <clears throat> bit of movie magic for you. Right. Welcome back to Nobs Explorer Radio. It has been a little while since we were on air and I think it's time we caught up with the explorers, Margaret. Yes, Colin, it has. But their journey continues in Portugal as they leave Lisbon to find the sea and some surf spots. Hello and welcome back to another Flora and Nobs Explorers vlog. We have just left Lisbon and we've had a weekend of hanging out with Leon and Meek from Fantastic Travelling. So yeah, Lisbon was really good. The weather let us down a bit, but we persevered and had a fun time anyway. Yeah. So check those videos out if you haven't already. And also managed to vlog in a very busy city centre. Yeah, which isn't our forte. This location is absolutely fantastic, but a really nice night's sleep here, really quiet. And a big lying because we had a little bit too much to drink two nights ago. We found ourselves in an Irish bar. Say no more. So we've recharged our batteries and we're ready to go. And this vlog is probably just going to be a few chores, a couple days normal life on the road now that we're at the city and sort of back into a more chilled out, uh, slower pace. Yes, we are just north of Lisbon on the coast, but south of Peniche. We're in a little town called Santa Cruz. So let the chores list begin. It's time to do some tightening of screws. I think it's time for a spot of brunch. So this is what you get when you've only got a few bits and pieces left and you need to use it up. So we've got some chopped tomatoes, fresh, really nice and ripe, with some, I call them hash potatoes, and a fried egg. So as lovely as this spot has been for the night, we are going to head more north, just a few kilometres to a bit more of a secluded spot potentially. We want to be able to walk on the beach possibly fly the drone, take some pictures and just chill out for the rest of the day really. So, uh, so we've packed the van down, swiveled the seat, made sure all the notches are turned on the cupboards and we're ready to hit the road. So hopefully in a few minutes we'll be at nice little car park just up the road. Take the second left. Left onto Cat Alduvalidari Balidag, then take the first right. Second spot of the day, it's another stunner. I have a feeling we might be pretty blessed with spots along this coastline. And I think everything's always better when the sun's out. Oh yeah, definitely. My mood is dictated quite heavily, unfortunately, by that sun. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is go for a quick walk. Yep, have get on the beach. Have a look what's around the local area. It's not, been a while. Not much by the look of it, but it's quite nice. Local surroundings. Massive seagulls. We're currently struggling to find the way down to the beach. <laughs> Good old uh, Google Maps on satellite says we need to go down here. Oh, there's people. And then down, forward, and then down. But there is still a bit of cliff, so I'm hoping that there might be some sort of steps. Mm, it's a bit of a sheer drop otherwise. Mm. Nice walk through the dunes though. Come on, let's go and find our beach spot. <laughs> <laughs> We eventually came across this beautifully rustic sign that helped reassure us that we were heading in the right direction. Then it was just a case of following the wooden boardwalk that leads you onto the concrete steps overlooking the stunning beach below.
It's a lovely beach, albeit a little bit loud because the sea is a little bit temperamental. Yeah, it looks a bit ferocious. And I think we better watch out because I think the tide comes up to here. So let's be responsible and not be silly. <laughs> yeah, if the tide comes and cover these steps behind us, I don't really know what we're going to do. So uh, we might stay close to here just in case. This is truly an incredible spot to witness the sunset from. It's absolutely spectacular and at the moment it's just me and Meg and a few seagulls. I don't think we had the slightest idea of just how lucky we were in this moment. We had everything we needed, almost limitless freedom and were surrounded by beauty that seemed to go on forever. <laughs> good morning. Morning. We had a really good night's sleep here. It's been absolutely brilliant, but we've got a load more jobs to do today. Very tedious and boring ones, but nonetheless, they have to be done. And tonight we should end up in a pretty cheap campsite for a shower, number one, and Ooh. maybe spend a couple of nights there, get on top of things. Yeah, shower is number one option. We need water, laundry, yeah. food shop. Food shop. We need stamps to send postcards. Uh -huh. We're going to check our oil, water and tyre pressure later on today when we get settled. And just things like that really, it's sort of like pressing the reset button. We headed to the town of Peniche and found the local laundrette to begin our mundane tasks. Lucky for us, there was a cafe next door to kill time and to grab a snack before returning to our washing. Then the weekly food shop. With most of our tasks completed, we checked into the town's cheapest campsite. So we're finally set up. It's 11 euro 40 for two nights. That's two adults, the van and electricity. So we think that's a very good price. Cal's been to check out the toilet block. Not too bad, but make sure you take your own paper, otherwise you're gonna be caught short big time. Uh, the washing's away, the shopping's away, fresh sheets, fresh towels, couple more things to do today, which is get the water topped up and go for that much needed shower. Happy days. <laughs> How dare you eat toast in front of the poor old Oscar? I think he's had plenty of toast in his time. We've got a, a new mate. A German Oscar who just likes hanging out. He knows the borderline. He's only tried it once, getting into the van. But we've given him just a little bit of toast. And now he's our mate forever. After a few nights on the campsite, we made our way to Nazare, home to some of the world's biggest surf. We headed into the main part of the town. Of course, we treated ourselves to a coffee, and this time we tested a Nutella Bolla de Berlin. We walked the beach and watched the surf. Impressive as it was, it wasn't quite the giant waves that we'd expected, but eventually we realized that the iconic lighthouse was nowhere to be seen. So we retreated back up the large hill in search of the famous surfing landmark. We found our way to Praia do Norte, where crowds had gathered to watch the surf and brave souls. This is the spot where a record-breaking 80-foot wave was surfed back in 2017.
our boards remained firmly strapped to Flora's roof rack. For one euro each, we entered the famous lighthouse, took a look in the Hall of Fame, information centre and gained access to the rooftop viewing platform. Our next destination has been noted in the Lonely Planet's book of 50 beaches that will blow your mind. Praia de Mira is a quiet beach situated on a stretch of Portugal's silver coast. So we've just pulled up to the car parking right by the beach. I'm a bit suspicious because it's very, very, very quiet. Um, yesterday in Azera it was very, very, very busy, wasn't it? Yeah. It was crazy busy, so I was expecting similar here, but there's no one about. <laughs> and there's a weird smell of like, turnip, oniony garlic in the air, I'm not quite sure what that is, but um, I'm sure we'll find out. Unless it's still us in the van, which it could be, couldn't it? No, right now it smells like there's some sort of cat weed out the end of the van, I can't work it out. <laughs> Partly concerned that we've got a problem. Meg's packing a swimsuit, but I think she might be a little bit ambitious because I'm pretty sure I can hear the surf and it sounds big. It might not be, but I think I can. Better to be prepared than not be prepared at all. Or bore it. So are you ready to have your mind blown by one of the top 50 beaches as recommended by Lonely Planet magazine? Um, I hope so. Um, I think we've got to bear in mind that it is February, not August. Uh. Um, and let's maybe have a little walk, maybe meander down a little bit, see what it's all about, because I think it's quite big, it's quite long, so. I hope it lives up to expectation, love, I do. First impressions. You may have been right about the need for a swimming costume. It might be all right. I'll save you. No, you will not. <laughs> uh, Looks and nice. There's sea foam, so. We'll have a look, shall we? Yeah, if we walk down into the town, it might get a bit calmer or not. But it's supposed to be one of the one of the more relaxing beaches on the list for tranquility. It looks nice. Nice sand. Yeah, nice sand. Nice dunes. So there's something very exciting about being this close to a turbulent sea, but it's also very, very scary. One mistake and it's all over. The power that the waves are crashing against these rocks with is unbelievable. It's quite an amazing sight. I think uh, yesterday's experience with big waves scared us a little bit as well. It's just... Yeah, seeing the sea like this turbulent soup, <laughs> it's just uncontrollable. Yeah. So the pros of travelling out of season is that there isn't quite as many people here but then the negatives are that it's not quite as good as it is in the summer. Weather wise and being able to swim in the sea, it's a little bit wild today and there's a chance we would probably die. I think this is where we will stay for tonight. It's not quite in the wild and rural but it's flat, it looks all right, and that's what wins tonight's vote. Yeah, it's uh, not very exciting, it's very similar to what we left this morning. Um, the good thing about these spots is that you know you won't get moved on, so we can like maybe have a little glass of wine later while we do our blogs. Um, but yeah, it's not very exciting. But neither is the weather or anything, so what you do? Yeah. But we're having something exciting for tea. I'm going to make van life sushi. Bye. 
If you'd like to make my van life sushi for yourself, head over to our website. A link will be down below. Trust me, it's pretty good and a little bit of a treat. I want this to music, I don't necessarily want it. <laughs> Um, excuse me. What? Chopsticks. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to tell for a long time that they didn't actually contain any fish. With the seaweed and the taste of the rice and the crunch of the um, vegetables inside, I, you just wouldn't know. And they're really, really tasty. And I'm not just saying that because she's got that big knife that she opened the jar <laughs> with just there on the side. <laughs> they are really nice. Very Moorish, but also um, quite filling, which is nice, isn't it? Mm. Today has been a great example of what it's like travelling in Portugal out of season. It's not what all the pictures say that it is in the summer and today's beach was a little bit disappointing. And this is just an honest vlog of what we're getting up to on our travels and next it's going to be Porto so come along for the ride. So if you like what you've seen today give us a like, comment, subscribe if you fancy if you're new to this and press that bell button to receive notifications of our next video, which will be Porto. See you in the next one.